about, well, of course, uh, power and what uh, that uh, means uh, to you. Well, in this case, the fact that power has been a real uh, thorn in the flesh for a lot of Kenyan manufacturers, and the fact that this has been a conversation that they have uh, tried to get well, out of the way, they held an event earlier today where the private sector players led by the Kenya Association of Manufacturers rallied the Kenya Power Company to develop an industrial tariff that can be applicable to manufacturers. This, of course, is expected to boost the competitiveness of Kenyan goods while raising the, company's, uh, the country's profile as an investment destination. One other thing that manufacturers need is predictability. And that is why a relationship like you're seeing today is very important. We need predictability in the environment we operate in, from taxes, from, from, from surges in, in, in pricings, you know, be it fuel, be it power, be it be cost of importation. We need clarity in legislation. We're very happy so far with what the government has done on, um, you know, ease of doing business. And you can see it's actually starting to attract foreign investment. So when we say ease of doing business, as in that conversation right there, of course, power is the first thing that we are going to talk about. But of course, also the questions around investment. What does it take for investors to come in and put their money? What kind of risks are they facing? Well, to answer that exact question, we have with us in studio Daniel Hill. He is a senior partner at well, Control Risks International, a company that specializes in advising investors on risk and stuff, of course, that pertains to what exactly that conversation should be about before you go in, into an economy. Welcome very much, sir. Thank you. Now, your bio says that you specialize, well, around uh, holding responsibility for clients' project delivery in various parts of uh, East Africa, uh, bringing in thought leadership on geopolitics, global security, macroeconomics, political risk. This is a wide basket of things. What exactly is it that the company does? Thanks, Peter. It's a very wide basket, as, as you quite rightly say. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, what we've launched today is our annual publication called Risk Map. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a global publication that goes out throughout our 38 offices around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and it gives a, a forecast into the year ahead around what we believe are some of the political risks and actually what is the, 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 the risk to business uh, globally but then also drilling down, and really importantly for us, based here in Kenya uh, and the wider Africa region, what are the risks that, that could impact us here? Uh, and to answer your question around sort of as a company, uh, as an as a independent business risk consultancy, that's what we do. Yes. Uh, we advise our, our clients uh, across sectors on, on how to, to operate uh, successfully, uh, how to maximise those opportunities whilst managing risk. Mm -hmm. uh, and those risks could, could be across the spectrum. Yes. If we again uh, come to the Kenyan situation, election year, uh, we have an election in August, uh, the uh, heated political temperatures. We're in the midst of a drought situation. Uh, we've seen uh, the NSC20, the barometer of the, of, of the Kenyan economy, literally tank. From where you sit, what would it be that you're saying to investors who are looking to come into this region? Would it be a hold? Would it be a wait and see? Would it be don't go in at all? What exactly would you be projecting? Thanks. So, so we as Controris, we, we support both that international investment, FDI, looking to come in, but also yes. local uh, companies. So mm -hmm. uh, you're quite right that in, in an election year, wherever it is in the world, mm -hmm. actually there's disruption uh, to, to business uh, and getting some of those projects across the line, whether that's through attracting uh, investment uh, inwards uh, or actually having the, 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 the regulations in order to, to push those projects through. Yes. So actually our, our key message is, yes, it uh, it's may well be a, a disruptive, period for Kenya. However, there's no reason why, why business cannot continue. Uh, and as I alluded to before, actually, we, we do advise on risk, but actually it's about seeing opportunity where other companies may not see that. Um, so that's not saying take undue risks. It's about making informed business decisions uh, or, or on the best information analysis that you can have around that market. Mm -hmm. well, one key conversation, especially here in Kenya, has been the question of integrity, corruption, uh, corporate governance, those sorts of questions. And increasingly, uh, if you look at uh, the reports that have been put out internationally, for example, when the Transparency International reports uh, and, and other pundits, they keep saying that this continues to be a critical uh, problem for Kenya. If you were to give us highlights of what is in the map that you released today pertaining to this region, would those come out on top? What are the highlights? 
Yeah, so, so the, the, the risk map that we control risks uh, have launched today, both here and globally, very much uh, have corruption as, a, as one of the core reasons of, of business disruption yes. or, or, or lack of progress around business. So if you can imagine uh, an international organisation set in New York, London or Tokyo, mm -hmm. looking at Kenya specifically, yes. how attractive is it to, to invest in here in the Kenyan market? Mm -hmm. What's the ease of doing business? Yes. Uh, and unfortunately, corruption uh, is at one of the top of the lists of, of, for our clients, one of their key risks mm -hmm. uh, that we've identified both in our risk map launch but in our day-to-day -day business. Um, I think it's worth mentioning, actually, it's not just Kenya. Uh, there's corruption, actually. There's yeah, no sure. country in the world that mm -hmm. doesn't suffer from corruption at one level or other. Yes. Um, I think the rhetoric that's coming out uh, Kenya-wide uh, is going to take a long time to, to manifest and a generational change, really, in uh, mindsets around corruption from the very lowest form uh, to the very senior. Mm -hmm. But it's a risk. But again, it's manageable. I think it's down to, 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 to both public and private sector. I think that's a key message. It's both sectors that are, that are, that are at the forefront of this. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, a, a, a private company, uh, actually, if it's involved in corruption, actually, one feeds the other. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's down to, to individual companies and organisations taking a, a firm stand uh, against corruption. And you can do business here mm -hmm. in Kenya mm -hmm. without paying bribes and without being corrupt. Yeah, as we start to wind down, how would uh, businesses consume this information? Does it empower them to be able to make uh, decisions from an empowered position? Does it enable them to hedge? How exactly are they supposed to employ the, the, the information they get to be able to operate in what you'd say is efficient? So I, I think the key word or message is around resilience. Yes. Uh, and a resilient organisation can, can overcome bumps in the road and hurdles, mm -hmm. uh, but actually uh, around disruption, and we've mentioned the, the elections this year, uh, that's no different, as I said, but anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. But I think the key message about being resilient Things do happen. You can yes. have as many plans and processes in place, but actually there are events that uh, you cannot uh, impact or drive mm -hmm. that, that could impact your business. Mm -hmm. So having a resilient approach, a strategic um, thought process around risk, and at the very highest level. Yes. Um, if I can quickly touch on cyber security, what we at Control Risk do, do yes. very uh, a, a strategic level. It's around, for that particular element, is ensuring that the ownership and the responsibility is at the very senior level. Mm -hmm. It can't be uh, delegated to IT, mm -hmm. which is in the past has probably been the, the approach. It needs to be led, owned, uh, by the senior management within an organisation. Mm -hmm. OK, finally, if you're looking into your crystal ball and projecting for Kenya for the next uh, uh, six to eight months, uh, come 2018, in hindsight, what should people be on the lookout for to ensure that they get uh, do achieve this resilience and their businesses survive and even maybe do really well and survive into the, well, the next season? Yeah, exactly. So that, that's, our, that's one of the, the key areas of, of risk map is of surviving and thriving. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, it's understanding uh, the market, understanding the business environment, how you could be impacted by global uh, risks uh, and what's going on in the global space, mm -hmm. but actually bringing that home and what can you control yourself uh, and actually being aware uh, and planning for those uh, known unknowns or unknown knowns. It's, it's really foreseeing what you believe could be out there. So mm -hmm. in December, January 2018, looking back and saying, actually, as a resilient organisation, it, it possibly was a turbulent year yes. uh, uh, for business, but actually we survived it uh, and we're in a good position now to drive forward. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Daniel Hill, Senior Partner, East Africa for Control Risks International. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. We'll, of course, uh, be asking our viewers to take a closer look at that, that risk map and see what they can uh, benefit in terms of resilience and uh, being enabled to thrive and operate a